Hey everyone, Japanese Import here. Since I started playing the game 8 years ago, I've been ranks varying from Silver 5 to Top 50 Challenger. To this day, I still learn new things all the time that constantly improve my play. There are lots of concepts that I was completely ignorant of until a few years ago in some cases, and really had wished that someone had taught them to me right away so that I wouldn't have had to learn through lots of painful losses and realizations over the years. So this video is here to compile together three of the biggest things that I wish I knew a long time ago. Learn from my experiences and save yourself the pain and tons of time. Let's get right into it. The first thing I wish I knew was to avoid hesitation. A lot of times you can be torn between a few different ideas at any given point, and no one idea might seem to be the best. It's in these situations that it's important to just choose one and not try and sit there figuring out what the best option actually is. This might sound crazy, but there are a few reasons for it, so let me explain. If you take even just three extra seconds to rationalize through your options, you're going to make it much harder for yourself to learn and improve. The human brain learns mostly from pattern recognition. If you ask a top chess player if they play every game reasoning through each of their openings, they'll 100% say no. It's something that they've studied while they aren't playing the game, and they just memorize the moves. They simply can't spare the time on calculating multiple moves ahead when they just need to be able to recognize the situation and know what's good and what's not. So how does this apply to League? Let's just choose an example situation that probably comes up a lot. Choosing between a counter gank top or just farming your gromp. If you delay your decisions to try and figure out the best one, you could show up to the gank just slightly too late and not quite save your laner or get a kill. Now, your brain is going to do something quite evil. It's going to subconsciously make you think that counter ganking top was the incorrect option in the situation that you were in. However, you don't actually know what the correct choice is now. We can't actually learn from a play because we didn't test either of our options. We tested an option that was delayed by 3 seconds. It might have been that if you got there just slightly earlier, you would win the play. If that was the case, you'd create positive feedback, where you made a decision and it was rewarded. If you got to the play without hesitation and it still didn't work, the next time you know that you probably should have just farmed instead. This system of making a decision and receiving feedback is what trains our brain. Pattern recognition is something that's very hard to practice. A perfect example of this is knowing how much damage you're capable of doing at any given point, or how much another champion is capable of doing to you. Everyone has a sort of feel for how tanky or strong they are at certain items and levels, and it's that sense that allows us to recognize plays quickly and act on them immediately. When a patch happens and that gets thrown out of whack either through buffs or nerfs, it feels really bad, and in a sense, you have to relearn the game. None of us can quite explain just how we know that we'll be able to kill someone, but high level players especially have an insanely good sense for it. If you hesitate, it creates a sort of cognitive dissonance where you can have a similar situation in the future and think that a counter gank looks good, but then you'll immediately recall this one time that it didn't work and then not try it. Our brains are really annoying like that. Don't make it harder for yourself by feeding your brain incorrect information. If you avoid hesitation, you will avoid a lot of struggles down the line, even if it does lead to you making some incorrect decisions in game. Remember that it's a marathon and not a sprint. Even the best players took years to learn this game, and it's because they built up tons and tons of pattern recognition and knew how to learn from their mistakes. Alright, the next is in a similar vein, but it's really important to not be results based. When I ask players that I coach to pick a VOD for me to review, they usually will pick a loss, and 99% of the time that's not actually the best kind of game to look at. What I want to do is look at a game where the player thinks they played perfectly, even if they won. The reason for this is to get them out of the mindset of using results to justify their play. Just because you lose a game doesn't mean you played badly. It's a team game. We simply just can't use wins and losses as a way of judging whether or not we played well. Once again, however, the human brain is a really annoying thing. We are always looking for feedback and tend to trust it way more than we should. Some of you might be thinking that this point contradicts my first one. However, it only does if we use our results as the only way of determining whether something is good or not. Just like you might have learned in middle and high school science class, you can never prove anything. You actually just come up with a theory on how something works and try to prove the theory wrong. Even with things that most of us take as facts now, such as the law of gravity or the speed of light, 
none of them are actually facts. We can't ever prove them right, even if we wanted to. We can only say that they are nigh impossible to prove wrong. The only true wisdom is knowing that you know nothing. Socrates. If we develop our pattern recognition and never keep trying to change it, or test it if it could be wrong, it completely stunts your ability to advance as a player. Even if a play works, or you win a game by absolutely stomping it, you shouldn't say that the game was good. In fact, you should question it even harder than your losses. The second you are happy with how you played, you become complacent and stop trying to learn and continue improving. True mastery in a game as deep and complex as League is impossible. As much as we want to, no one will ever become a perfect player, and it's why you'll hear challenger players constantly calling diamond players, masters, or even other challengers bad, even though in the grand scheme of things, they are so much better than the vast majority of players. If you're able to hit challenger, you have the mindset to learn and keep asking questions. I will always think that I'm bad. I think all the people I play with are bad, and pro players are bad, and everyone is bad. Realistically, is that correct? No. But that mindset is what lets me keep asking if my plays are right and lets me keep learning. Even when watching pros to learn from them, we shouldn't treat it as the gospel. Will they do 99% of their plays correctly? Probably, but we should never treat anyone like they can't be wrong, even the experts. There's a really well-studied effect in psychology called the Dunning-Kruger effect. It basically just says that there is a point where people who are not experts in a field will think that they are much more competent than they actually are. Here's a graph to roughly show what I'm talking about. This is something that's very hard to avoid even if you know about it. I often get comments and questions from players that will tell me that they understand certain aspects of the game, but not others. And the first thing I do in the coaching session is go find examples of the things they thought they understood and show them how they don't. While it's hard to avoid, just knowing about your cognitive biases, you might catch yourself assuming you understand something. You know nothing. Snow. When a play works, still review the game. Think about how you could have played it better, even if you got the intended result. The most limited resource for all of us is time. Getting the most bang for your buck and truly learning from every game you play, not just the losses, will make your climb much easier. Okay, so for the final thing I wish I knew, we're going to stick with the mentality theme of this guide and it's how to actually fix your problems once you've identified them. The previous two points focus on giving you tools to figure out what your issues are, but fixing them is a whole different problem. Plenty of times I'll be reviewing a game and ask the player what they should have done, and in hindsight they're able to actually identify what the quote unquote correct play should be, or what at least a better play is. The issue is that in real time, they're unable to execute it, this could be a problem ranging from just not knowing where the enemy jungler is because you forgot to check the map, you just not counting their CS when you see them, or messing up a combo because you have a habit of pushing your buttons in a particular way. All three of these have clearly identifiable fixes. If you don't know where the enemy jungler is, even if they showed on map, just check the map more. If you didn't count their CS, just count their CS. And if you push your buttons wrong, just push them right. Okay, so that probably sounds like the most forehead thing ever, and yeah, you're right, it's not exactly helpful advice, is it? Even though it would technically fix your problems. Sometimes you can know what you need to do and still not do it. Most people probably don't know, but my other job is actually playing gigs as a musician. Theoretically, do I have all the tools I need to play any song? Yeah, I have the technical prowess after playing my instruments for 20 plus years now. And I know enough about music theory that that's not a barrier to me either. But when I learn a new song, I can't just play it. I have to sit there and practice. It's painstaking and it sucks, but it's just unavoidable. However, not all practice methods are created equal. Just like how playing three games on autopilot and learning nothing doesn't help you, playing no games and instead choosing to watch content about the game could be great, or playing one game where you're really focused can be even better, regardless of if it's less experience. You get the idea. When I'm learning a new song, I break it down. I'll split it up into as many digestible bits and pieces as I possibly can. On piano, I'll practice just a section of the song, maybe just the intro. And then I'll practice the right hand rhythm without playing notes. Then add in the left hand, then play the right hand by itself slowly, and then the left hand. Then I'll add them together, and only then will I try speeding it up to the tempo it's supposed to be. Rinse and repeat for the other parts of the song, and boom, you've got the whole thing. 
It's a whole lot of steps, and in League, a lot of players will come out of watching a video or from a coaching session with all sorts of ideas and things they want to try. But if you just try to jump in with all these concepts in mind, it's really hard to actually practice and get results. The most important thing you can do for yourself is to first identify your mistakes and then break up the solution. Focus on one aspect of it and tunnel on it completely. If you never look for dives, literally go the entire game only thinking about dives and play everything else on autopilot. Yes, you might play terribly, but again, it's a marathon, not a sprint. What you're trying to do is think about dives so much that your brain doesn't have to consciously check for them anymore. At some point, there comes a time where the game becomes second nature, where you do things without having to think. At this point, I automatically look at the map all the time. I move my camera to my lanes, and I count the enemy jungler's CS. These are all things that at one point were not natural to me. I had to force myself to constantly think about them, but eventually, they become so ingrained in my brain that I no longer have to think. It just happens. Don't try to incorporate everything at once. Slowly and methodically fix mistakes. Iron out aspects of your play, even spending time in practice tool just doing combos over and over again, or practicing your clear can have so much more value than playing 20 solo queue games. It's all about how you go about fixing your problems that determines how fast you'll climb. All right, guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skill Cat. So we offer a five division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Okay, so I know that this was a bit of a different video than usual that focused on some stuff that we normally don't talk about, but I think that the mental aspect of the game is something that's criminally undervalued and not talked about enough. Having a learning mindset is pretty much half the battle when it comes to learning the game and actually improving. We always give things to think about in our guides, but never have really given methods or ideas that help implement them in your own play. Hopefully today's video got you thinking, if nothing else, about how to improve and get better at this game that we all play.